in your programs tonight a whole list of strange names. And I won't go through and play each one of them for you, but I want to explain a little bit about the organ. You know, when the church sets out to buy a new organ, there's usually an organ committee. And either nobody knows anything or everybody's an expert. Everybody very quickly understands converting the kitchen or evangelizing the roof, but they don't understand about getting a new organ. So uh, they usually call in somebody else, an expert, who's anybody from out of town. <laughs> and you say, well, you need one of these and two of those and five of the others, and uh, if you have an extra 25 cents, we'll have three thingamajigs. So we have some, some thingamajigs, too, which I'll show you. But maybe we ought to get the thingamajigs out of the way first of all, because uh, you might be surprised to find some of these things in a church organ. But they, they go back to uh, very ancient times, to the monastery organs and the early church organs where the Christians believed that not only the sound of an organ or the sound of a human voice should praise God, but that in reality all nature should praise God. So they would bring into the church and install in the organs uh, some really very strange things. Many of the old organs, for instance, had thunder stops. Now, we did not put a thunder stop in this organ. We can make one kind of artificially if we need to. And if I don't get tripped up here. It's kind of an artificial thunder, but we have some more realistic things. If we go back to the time of Bach, for instance, they had a little star five-pointed star that you would see on the front of the organ case. And when Bach, and Buck Sahuti, and other composers of that period wanted this musical sound to occur, they would point to an assistant who would turn the crank, and the star would go around, and on each corner of the star would be a little bell, like you put around a cat's neck, and this helped praise God. Here we don't have to point to an assistant, we just push a button. Well, that's called the Zimbelstern, or the Bell Star, and it, it does its thing no matter what I do, but it's generally used in very light music. All part of praising God, believe it or not. You can also do it this way, and this is something that's a little bit foreign to South Texas, I think, but some of the rest of us have heard about it. <laughs> the effect is that of falling snow. Let me get a little more snow here. Can't you see the snow falling? Well, enough for thingamajigs, but I did tell you that they believe in all nature. Enough snow, thank you. <laughs> they believe that all creatures praise God, and many of the organs would have not one, but many, sometimes five, six, seven, eight, nine bird stops. And so we have in this organ a nightingale. Now, this is used in some early music. I will play some of the concert tomorrow night, which uses it. And, uh, in this way, we have to do the indignity of stepping on the bird's tail to make it sing. See, no hands. I've got a foot down here I'm kicking it with. Now, you might wonder what all that has to do with the church organ. As I said, the early Christians believed that all, everything should praise the Lord, so they had sound effects. Now, quickly, there are four basic kinds of organ sound, all of which are represented here. Uh, with uh, many different uh, varieties. One, the first one is called the principal sound. Well, this is what makes an organ sound like an organ. It doesn't duplicate anything. We have them in all sizes and shapes. Organ pipes, you know, are just like people. They come in all sizes and shapes. And some of them make polite sounds, and some of them make sweet sounds, and some of them make other kinds of sounds. <laughs> but it's necessary to put, a, put them all together, and that's how we get wonderful congregations, that's how you get wonderful sounds out of an organ. So these are kind of um, what we call middle-of-the-road diapasons. Now we have some great big ones. These great big long pipes up here in the case are called, they're also a principle. They're 32 feet long, and they make a not a particularly musical sound, but they're the firm foundation. 
They're the solid rock that the organists build on. Inflate your feet. That's the lowest one. We have some other low ones I'll show you in a minute that are a little less polite than that one. <laughs> Once we leave the principal sounds, we get into flutes. Now, these many of these imitate orchestral flutes. But we have dozens of them. It would take all of them just to show you. But let me let me show you again how they come in various shapes and colors. We have uh, some fat members of the board. Yeah, some very pretty uh, higher ones. You notice on the list of groceries that I told you about that you have in there, there'll be a, a number at the beginning. One will say 16, or one will say 2, or 4. Some of them have fractions. That means that the longest pipe in that particular set of pipes is 16 feet long, 8 feet long. The larger the number, the deeper the pipe, like the 32 foot is way down. That's one of the lowest sounds in the organ. One of the highest ones is about the size of your little finger, or less. That's up in mouse territory, church mouse territory. <laughs> but all in between, marvelous uh, range of colors of, of various groups in the organ. Then we go to the strings, which uh, tend to imitate the strings of the orchestra. I say tend because we've got some real ones sitting over here tonight. I don't want to sell them. Nothing is ever as good as the real thing. They're the real thing. But for organ, this is great. These are some of the strings. These are the stops of people who don't like the organ loud like. Very beautiful. We have some big ones too. Again, all sizes and shapes. So we have principles, flutes, strings, and finally we have reeds. We have two kinds of reeds. Ones which imitate, again, instruments in the orchestra, such as the French horn. horn, and many others. Then we, outside of the imitated reeds, we have trumpets of all sizes and shapes, which you have heard, and we'll hear more tonight. Probably once I'm out of town, they won't let the organists use them here anymore because they're kind of loud. <laughs> but I'm leaving town, so I'll plan for you tonight. Here are some. These are back behind the wall. Some over here. Over there. Now we have one called the heroic trumpet. This we're saving for the second coming. 